Hey, I'm Chivy, and I suck at fighting games, but I can do this combo, and I can explain it to you too. Fighting games have a reputation of being super hard, and they kind of are if you want them to, but they don't actually have to be. It just takes a little simplification, and I can do that shit, that's no problem. That's what I'm making this guide for. It's for just fighters in general, just the whole genre of fighters. It applies to everything. This guide isn't meant to make you good at fighters, but it's at least here to get you started. So, here's how to play. First off, who to pick? Literally fucking whatever. Pick whoever you think is cool, or you think is cute or has something that they do that's just really cool. I don't care what game you pick, you can pick whatever, go about this however you want. I would at least recommend you stick to like two characters max. Unless there's like a team game and you need to pick three characters or something, then I don't know. Just try to not pick too much. There's a lot to learn, so it'll take a lot of time. After you pick your dude, hop into training mode real fast, just hit some buttons. It can get weird from game to game because they all have different buttons, but just hit them all. It's cool to know what your buttons look like, what attacks your guy does, and you want to check out what kind of inputs they'll have in the command list. But hold up. Before we get into that mess, let's just stick to the button presses, alright? See, when it comes to buttons, the higher up you go in the pecking order, whatever order that is, the more damage they'll deal, but the slower they'll all be. There's a lot of characters with a lot of buttons and a lot of series with a whole different kind of set of buttons. I can't teach everything, so I'm gonna just tell you how to figure it out. Well, okay, so you know how in Pokemon games, right? You need to have a specific Pokemon with certain moves that let you advance in the level. You know what I'm talking about, right? It's those times where you need to cut down a tree, smash some rocks, maybe surf your way through the sea. Well, fighting game characters have that shit too, it's just not immediately blatantly obvious when you gotta use them, and they're not labeled in any way. But they exist. These key moves will be your anti-air, your poke, your reversal, your mix-ups, and your knockdowns. But what are these moves? How do I identify them? What do those words even mean? Alright, so let's break them down one by one. Number one, your anti-air. Your anti-air is simply an attack you use when your opponent jumps at you. It could be a punch, an uppercut, a kick, grab, whatever. It just swats them out of the air, and sometimes you might get a combo for it, sometimes you won't, who knows. That's why you gotta mess around and experiment. Next is your poke which is just as simple. It's a move that reaches out and hits the enemy from a pretty good distance. This isn't a move that needs to hit up from a mile away, but it'll cover a good chunk of space in front of you. Generally speaking, you'll want to use this move to either keep people away from kissing range, or maybe to open them up for an attack. Number three, reversal. Now, reversal moves are your offense is the best defense kind of attack. They're like a panic button that you can use when you are getting beat up. These moves may knock your opponent a good distance or just onto the floor, and this will buy you some breathing room so you can get out of the corner or do whatever. Be careful though, as these may come at a risk. You done fucked up now! They'll usually leave you wide open if they miss or are blocked. So you can't just get away with using them all the time. You gotta think a bit. Number four, mix-ups. Mix-ups are a bit weird, but they're very important for some characters. See, you block by holding back or just away from your opponent. That's what mix-ups are meant to break. They get over, under, behind, whatever it takes to get past your opponent's defense. They are some kind of offensive move, and can get pretty nasty if you aren't ready for them. You gotta have a keen eye to block the right way. Number 5, Knockdowns. Last but not least are your knockdowns. 
These put your opponent on the ground. And no, I don't mean like a grab or a suplex or some bullshit like that. I know it's not very exciting, but these are important. Because see, when you're on the ground, the only thing you can do is just get back up. So knockdown moves will remove your opponent's options. So you kind of focus solely on your offense for a second. You don't have to worry about them moving around. You just know that they're going to stand up and they have to worry about what you're going to do. It's okay for characters to specialize in certain moves. And hell, some characters might not even have these kinds of moves. They'll usually sacrifice some of those tools in favor for other abilities. But this is general good stuff you'll want to look for in whatever character you're interested in. Alright, now you're ready for that command list I teased earlier. A lot of beginners might be intimidated by all the weird symbols that show up in this section, but I'm here to tell you that it's not actually that bad. Tying movement and actions together might seem a bit alien at first, but with a little bit of practice, it'll all seem natural in no time. See, people have a hard time describing these motions, and different communities have made different terms for some of these more common ones. But I'm going to teach y'all the objectively best method. It's called numpad notation. See this thing? This is what my controller is doing. When I move my stick, it'll show up here. Now take a look at this picture of a number pad. Do you see a resemblance here? So, down left would be one on the number pad, two for down, three for down right, four for left, eight for up, etc, etc. Now, 5 is dead center, which actually means that I don't touch the stick. That's where it's at by default. This is also called the neutral position. I hope that makes sense, cause shit's gonna get weird from here on out. I know you guys wanna see combos, so here, take this one. Now, this is what numpad notation looks like. It's kinda like how musicians read sheet music, but for ass beatings. 5B means put the stick in the 5 position or neutral, meaning do not touch. Then hit B. Next, 5C, parentheses 2. Same shit here. 5C is just press C. That 2 in the parentheses there just means that this move will hit twice. 3C is 3, then C. And the 4, 1, 2, 3, 6, B is what's called a half circle forward motion. So my stick does this U shape you see here. And it's that fucking simple. Unfortunately, the game doesn't have numpad notation. But we can always ask online or look up what the inputs are in numpad notation yourself. I'll tell you right now, the most common inputs you'll see are the quarter circle motion, aka Hadouken motion, aka 236 motion. Another big one is the DP motion, DP meaning dragon punch, which is 623. This one kind of fucks people up, but this is usually your big reversal slash anti air, but there should always be an easier input for anti airs. Like I said at the start, it just takes some simplification. Alright, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want more. I'm planning on making more. Next episode will probably be about combos or some bullshit. Just let me know down in the comments what you guys want to learn about, and I'll try my best. And I got some shoutouts. Special thanks to Baru Berry for the Pokemon Tree Sprite. Thanks to Insanius for all the Rock Howard sprites. And special thanks to Kyle Boy for the Pokemon Surf Sprite. Alright, that's it for now. Hope that helped. Goodbye.